Hello, welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to start talking about our page objects. And we're going to go on another way that you can create your page objects using uh, annotations uh, find by. Uh, it's an annotation that's built into Selenium that allows you to take web elements that you specify and have them refine themselves on the web page every time you call them. So let's actually just dive right in immediately. So um, you know, first thing we want to do is we're going to go to this tools and taverns thing and uh, we want to get, we're going to take one of these, um, one of these pages here and we're, and we're going to kind of, actually, you know what? Refactor. That's what we're going to do. Refactor. Let's go to this. So we're going to go to our uh, page that we created before. And I think you might be familiar with this with a previous video, just kind of explaining what page objects are. And in this one, we're going to take our uh, variables here that we specify as by, and we're actually going to create uh, and annotate them with find by. So, um, you know, we can we're just going to ignore this, and, and we're just going to create from the top, and we're going to create uh, a title, and again, and it, this will this will be something that seem you know it will break in the beginning, and that's okay. Um, we just want to create this annotation. So, because um, what we really want is this. Um, selector here. So we're going to cut that guy out. And when you create your web elements, uh, you know, you want to do var title colon web element, so the type. And then we're going to say this is equal to null. So what we're saying is, and there's a couple reasons why we have to do this. So the var is letting us know that this title element uh, or, or variable will change. So, because uh, when every time you call it, if the DOM has changed, we want it to be able to refind it because we don't want to have uh, a stale element exception. And that's something I'll explain with exceptions down the line, um, which essentially means that when you reference this object, it will, um, the DOM has changed since the last time you referenced it. So when you recall title, it will fail to be found. And I'm gonna show you all of this here in a second. I'm just giving you some kind of overhead what's going on and, and then we'll use code to kind of show you what's going on. So so first off, it's you create your element and we're gonna say find by. And find by, you can set a lot of different things here. You can say, you know, uh, ID, the name, the class name, CSS selectors, if there's a tag, if there's text in the link, you can do a partial link text. Maybe you just know a little bit of it. And then there's X path. You know, there's all kinds of ways to find it. I like to just use the straight CSS, keeping consistent. Everyone knows what you're doing. There's none of this. Is it ID? Is it not? It just makes it so much easier to just have a standardization across the board. So I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to say CSS equals. And before our title, we had it by dot CSS selector. We had this whole guy right here, this whole thing. And every time we wanted to reference it, we had to come down here and we had to say element every single time. Instead, one of the cool things we get to do just by doing this title here, if we go back to our name generator test. Uh, see how it's complaining before? Because we had to say driver.findby. We had to do this whole entire thing. You can delete all this now. So Because now what's happening is uh, we have to make sure it's not null. Because remember, we set this as an optional to say that this is null. And uh, so we have to verify it's not null. So now what's happening is saying name generator page, get the title and give me the text. We know more of the driver dot find by because every time you reference this, this uh, at find by will refind it every single time. It's really, really great. Um, now, um, you know, we can't right now, if we ran this, it would totally fail, right? Because one thing you have to do, and this is kind of um, the one of the, uh, the downsides, I guess you can say, is you have to initialize your page objects now. So uh, before we didn't, we we initialized it here, but we have to actually do one step further, and that's using a page factory. So let's 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 dive in piece by piece. So <clears throat> in our class, right, that we're using, and we're using Kotlin. Um, instead of doing like in Java, you have the idea where you have to say like the name generator, right? And then you have this, and then you type in this stuff, like just you start setting a bunch of stuff for the constructor. Similar idea, except for it's called an init um, 
function that allows you to say, when I initialize this object, I want some code to, to run. So what's the code we want to run? Uh, we want to take this uh, page factory dot init elements. And what we're telling this um, to do is we're gonna say, hey, I want you to initialize all these elements on this page class. And um, so the first things first is we need a driver. Well, cool thing is we're passing driver in already. Makes it a lot easier. But the second piece we have to do is it's saying, well, what do you want to initialize? Well, I want this page to be initialized. So you just say this. This is the thing I want. I want to initialize all of these at find by elements and initialize them. So now when we call this name generator page uh, in here, we pass the driver in in our before class when we're initializing all the page objects, it will now call this block of code and run page factory dot init elements and it'll pass in the driver and it will initialize all the elements that are uh, have annotated by find by. And this is really great. Um, so, you know, let, let's do a few more. Let's do the, just one more, the, the gender dropdown. Um, so we want the at find by CSS equals, um, and we want this, this right here. So we're going to copy that over and we want that. We want the same var gender dropdown, same name is fine. What is it? It's a web element and you know, we have to say it's null and, and we're going to, we're going to remove this and now we're going to get a lot of errors. So now it's complaining, Hey, you know, we had a, we had this L, this old thing here. That's like by, and it had a pass in by and that whole thing. So, um, you know, we're going to actually refactor this whole thing. So we'll do one more. We'll do both drop downs just to make it easier. Again, I'm doing a, I'm doing a copy paste just to speed up things. I, you know, I just remember when you copy paste, make sure you change everything. Re go through the code. Okay. I change the selector. I change it to var race drop down. Everything's different from the previous thing. I you got to always remember that guys. It's really important. So you have the race drop down. Now it's complaining because this function here takes in a by object, but we we have web elements now. So cool thing about this is we can actually just change this to web element, web element, and instead of by, we'll just call it element, just to simplify. Um, and now we don't even need this line anymore. So uh, you know, and then the drop down. It's still complaining. Ah, it's complaining because, um, I mean, this works, these two lines work, but this is complaining now because the idea that this web element here, um, is, is a null. So you have to say, Hey, it's not null by the time, you know, you, you, you call these. So, um, you know, one downside and, and later down the line, I, you know, I think there's going to be some really cool things we can do to get rid of these. But for now, this is not a horrible thing to do. It's just not the best. So you got to really think about, you know, kind of what's going on there. Uh, just, just, just be aware of what you're doing. Like, why am I setting this? Is it just getting rid of the error? No, I need to make sure this thing is not null before I pass it in. Again, you can do like check, not null, pass this in here. And then you can get rid of these. Oh no, can't get rid of those. Interesting. Um, still returns. Yeah. Um, I thought you could do that. I guess you can't. That's oh, fine. Just know, just know what's happening here. So, um, <clears throat> so now you know we essentially just cut down some some text here. And every time we call this again, it will refine it in the DOM. So uh, I mean, we might as well just do the last one, just really quick. Uh, we might as well just go all out, right? The, the button. Now we have the button. Let's get this. So we changed the name. We're changing the CSS. We don't need this anymore. Um, and then the last one is this name text fields. Okay. Ah, ah, we ran into a little snafu here. So what's the difference here? What's wrong with this? Well, this was something that was re retrieving, um, text or names, right? We had to do this whole thing. Well, cool thing about this is now instead you can say, um, we can make a list of web elements. Now, 
some people that if you guys are familiar with Java and you've done this before, you probably are used to doing something like this. This will not work because this variable is going to change every time you call it. So this list will constantly change. It's not going to be a final or fine. It's not going to be a final at any point. It's immutable. In Kotlin, a list is immutable by, by default. So you have to specify mutable list uh, for this to work. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. So uh, now that we have this, now you don't have to say find elements anymore. You can just call this outright and it already returns um, a list. Um, again, it's not null. So, <clears throat> and we don't have to make it private anymore because when you call this, you know you're gonna be retrieving a list. So it's really something nice to you know have and, and use for your for your page objects now. Um, so you know let's let's kind of correct everything. Um, you know uh, now we have this click generate. You probably don't need this anymore. You could probably just remove it. And the reason why is because I mean it says button. What do you do with buttons? You click them. So uh, you can now you have access to these these functions, and you can say you know the generate button dot click uh, you don't have to you don't have to write out all of these different um, you don't have to write all these different buttons out anymore or, or, or functions that like click something because you have to driver dot find element and you had to have this whole string of things to happen you don't need to do that anymore um, I would even argue now I mean I talked about this prior but you know you can probably just do something like this where you add the select and then you have the value like so, and you don't need this anymore, right? I mean, you, you're, you're, you have the idea here that it, um, you know, we, we were had three lines of code, now we only have two. It's not that bad. I mean, you know, you pick and, pick and choose how, how much do you really want to refactor everything? Um, so just for the sake of this one, I'm just going to use this uh, bad boy right here, delete this right here, delete that, we don't even need that. Now look at that, so much less code than before. Um, oh, so one, what was what I just did up here, this, this val and this driver, it's complaining that this could be private. However, because in Kotlin, when you, when you specify variables up here, if you didn't set the val, this means that this is accessible on the constructor level. So, so if I came down here and I tried to try to do something with it, it won't know what it is um, because that value will create an actual variable inside the class. But when you do this, this is only reachable in the constructor level. So anything in like the init block. So um, you want to do things like this. That's really nice because if someone starts coding something new in here and they're like, oh, I want to access the driver. Uh, and they're like, oh, I can't. And maybe because you didn't want that to be. So again, you know, you're putting you're putting rules in your classes as you go, which is also really good for uh, cross cross team um, code writing, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So um, what did we do here? So we created our find buys. We created a, a list. We created regular web elements. How's everything looking here? You know what? Let's run it. Let's see. So let's see what happens. Let's kick that off. We're gonna run, it's gonna think, it's gonna do. Um, oh, here we go. Opened up the page, went, went really fast. What happened though? Um, the incorrect number of names on first generation, expected 10 but found one. Interesting. So let's go back here. Um, we expected the names from that generated names list to be 10, but there was only one. Interesting. Let's, uh, let's slow that down. Um, let's slow that down real quick. Where was it failing? Right here. Let's debug. So we're gonna debug it. See what happens, let's see. Ah, interesting, okay, there's 10. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Interesting. Um, but it says that there's actually only one. Ah. Mm, okay, let's see. Okay, so the there was a matching name. Huh. Oh, there was a matching name? What are the odds of that happening? This might be an actual bad test, or there might be a bug. Um, either way, I mean, so how would we debug this? Um, you know, I'm going to run it one more time. Uh, I think it might be a, a possible bug where um, the generation's not... You, you always want a different name, and that should be by design. Um, but, let's see, any name... Second, so here's the first list. I'm not gonna go and debug what's actually going on here uh, since that's not the point of this video. Um, oh, I think I know what's happening. This night breeze and this night breeze are the same. So it thinks that there's gonna be the same. Uh, and that's, uh, let's, let's do something in like a dwarf or something. Let's just change it up a little bit. Um, maybe hoping this so this will fix that that issue there um and and again we can make it a little more robust yeah there we go um you know i i will probably go in and you know if i had some specs on how the elf drop down is supposed to work um but you know end of the day uh you know the idea is you know this is how we create our web elements so again we create our web elements by putting our CSS inside of the annotation find by. And then same with a list. If you want a list of a bunch of different uh, web elements, uh, this, this CSS will retrieve, you know, we go back to tools and taverns and we go back to that name generation and we inspect and, and we do a find. See, we're retrieving 10 names. Um, it's all these names here on the left hand side. See how I'm scrolling. Um, and if we want all 10 of those to be captured, you want to use a mutable list, and that's when using Kotlin. Um, and I think that's would pretty much do it. And and again, you just have to make sure you hit this in it here. Um, you know, in future videos, I'm gonna try to talk about how we can even make that even simpler moving forward. And uh, hopefully, you guys uh, tune in then. Um, you know, I'm starting to do live streams now, so please, you know. Uh, chime in if you have any questions you know feel free to ask then and I, I love to hear questions I love I want I want people to bring in really challenging um, harder uh, kind of tasks and puzzles to tackle uh, or issues you run into uh, so until then guys you know keep on automating and I'll see you online